Today, I don't come to you as an entertaining YouTuber. Today, I come to you as an essential grief counselor. Because over the last couple years, we all lost something very important to us, and I don't think anybody has done the actual work to process this grief. Okay, a couple years ago, we as a community, we all collectively lost Turnstile. And there were two sides for a little bit, you know, people were really defending uh, the death of them, and then other people were like, no, this is the clear death of them, and some people were in denial, and, uh, you know, the, the, the emotions were just everywhere, okay? And over the last couple of years, it's been simmering, it's been sauntering, okay? And then, Turnstile, even while they're dead, they're getting nominated for a Grammy, okay? So that's what's inspiring this video. What killed Turnstile? Because, spoiler alert, it happened well before the Grammys, well before those outfits that you saw in the thumbnail here, okay? They were dead long before this, and this, like, Grammy thing is just, like, further proof, deeper indications of the rigor mortis. And I know this is gonna be opening some wounds, and I don't wanna, like, touch on any scars or whatever. You're gonna be smelling the formaldehyde from beginning to the end of this video, but it is important. We need to process this together as a community. Hey ladies, how's it going? Dan Frampton here. Has a bet you like, comment, and subscribe because you know, I am the hater with a list of enemies, but I also have a list of people that like videos and you're one of them. So go ahead and do that thing. Okay, I gotta stop being silly. I gotta stop being goofy. We gotta stop beating around the bush. We gotta start talking about this. This all goes back to 2011 when Turnstile were initially all in this other group, okay? They were in this band called Trapped Under Ice. This band was very, very hardcore, very, very hard hitting, and they had a lot of fans and a whole following, and they were very tight, you know? But the lead singer of Trapped Under Ice, uh, Justice, he didn't, he didn't end up making it to Turnstile, okay? He ended up going and doing his own thing. But this, this record over here is just an EP, and it's called Pressure to Succeed. It's just six songs, and it's not that serious, you know? They're just a bunch of guys trying to do this stuff for fun. They're writing fun, bouncy riffs and just having a good time. It's fast, it's simple, it's groovy, okay? This is a fresh side project, and the Trapped Under Ice drummer makes for a pretty decent little vocalist. I think that these guys have a pretty bright future. You know, they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. They're just, like I said, having fun, writing cool little songs. And this EP wasn't available for streaming for the longest time on the lead up to their death they released this thing kind of like as a sign i don't know what it, what the whole thing was because the thing is called pressure to succeed so it was like they were forecasting their own future or whatever and they were like saying goodbye to one part of their life and saying hello to another part of their life and releasing this thing was kind of like saying that without saying that or at least that's how i see it and i could be reading a little bit too far into it but who knows what i do know is this is a great EP, it's getting two out of two stars. Very much alive. And then we move on to 2013 to Step to Rhythm. This thing is filled with iconic tracks and riffs and bops, okay? It is clear that these guys are going places. These guys are doing things that are making the mosh pit do things that we haven't seen before, okay? These tracks are people movers. People are bouncing around, running into each other, hanging off the rafters and jumping off of every single amplifier, okay? The shows are getting wild, completely out of hand and unhinged. And they're still not reinventing the wheel. This is still meat and potatoes, simple, basic, hardcore music. And this is hardcore music for any kind of slam dancer. If you're a stage diver, if you're a circle pitter, okay? If you're someone that's throwing windmills and two steps, that kind of thing, any kind of thing is the kind of thing that you can be doing to turnstile. Even if, if you're just like a head bobber, if you're an arm folder, if you're a head banger, if you're any kind of slam dancer, this record is gonna provide tracks for you to slam your kind of slams to. I can't say much more about this. This is getting two out of the possible two stars, very much alive, very much an awesome listen, and look at this album cover. God damn, look at the font on Step to Rhythm. That is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I love it. Okay, now we gotta talk about the great year 
2016. Everybody has great stories about their life in 2016. 2016 is probably the best year ever in the history of anything, right? Oh, 2016, what a time to be alive. 2016, Turnstile is doing this EP. They dropped this four song thing and I'm only giving it one out of two stars. Yes, every song on this thing is a banger, but that's just the problem. This thing should be much longer. One out of two stars, but you know, I'm still gonna call it very much alive. But then in the same year, okay, we got Nonstop Feeling, which would be their first full length. They're putting a whole bunch of songs together. 12 songs, 27 minutes, and all the ingredients that we've heard from Turnstile so far. Not only are they proving to be riff machines and bounce heads and slammers, okay? These guys are proven to be sequencers of tracks. This thing just has such a nice flow to it. This thing is highly focused and precise. It's almost the exact mathematical equation to create slam dancers. It was just like Brady knew had to write those riffs that were moving the pit. And remember that name Brady. He was that like bucket hat wearing, that kind of stoner guy, that guitar player, you know? Uh, we're, we'll get to him in a little bit. He's still with the band, very much an integral part of this whole puzzle. Brendan brings the emotionally vulnerable lyrics and that passionate delivery that he is famous for by now. The song Blue By You brings some melody to the table, showing us that these guys are ready to experiment. We're also getting some alt rock sounds in the mix, okay? Both vocally and musically. We're starting to see some reverb and some delay and some echo. Starting to feel that depth and those textures you know? At this point, Turnstile have a full tool belt of punk rock weapons to use at their disposal. This thing is getting two out of two stars. And then 2018 would come around and they would drop this thing over here, time and for sand space. And this record is probably one of my favorite records of all time. And yes, they're doing a little bit of weird stuff on here, okay? They're not doing hardcore from beginning to end. They're playing with some different kind of alternative ideas on this thing. These riffs and the vocals just go so hard. It's their Roadrunner debut, and The Real Thing is one of the best opener songs in the whole world. Talk about flow and sequencing perfection. This thing's got it down. You can listen to this thing from front to back and not even realize that any time or space has passed. It's just iconic and blistering, fever-pitched aggression with just great hooks, catchy songs, and it's very, very stylish, okay? This is where their Pokemon should have stopped evolving. This is absolute peak turnstile. And everything on this record is so influential that we're hearing the sounds even to this day, okay? From Mind Force to Regulate, all the way to End It and Back Again, okay? You can hear turnstile and more specifically, time and space's influence throughout the scene. Everybody wants to be able to create that magical, simple riff that is gonna make people go crazy. Because it seems so easy, okay? You got three little notes. If you tune down to drop D, you don't even need to make full chords. And you can just make people bounce around, right? Well, Brady did it so great. But everybody now knew that Turnstile was on a major label. And not only were they on a major label, they were actually knocking things out of the park. Every town that they played went absolutely crazy for these guys. So a big part of their fan base got rightfully nervous. We were like, okay, what are these guys gonna do next? Cause it's 2018 and the years are going by. By 2020, we're like, okay, these guys need to be putting out new material, okay? So we're still waiting, we're still waiting. Nervously waiting, I might add. And then we get to this. We get to Turnstile Love Connection, which was a little four song EP put out to promote their full length upcoming. And not only was this a little EP, it was like a short film put together by lead singer, vocalist, frontman, Brendan Yates. And everything about it was just so cool, okay? I was like, okay, I'm hopeful again. This is okay. Maybe the record isn't gonna suck. Maybe they're gonna put out something that rules. Maybe they're gonna keep being awesome, right? This, this, this is awesome. And little did I know, I was just coping so hard because the full length 
came out. And on the EP we had Mystery, Holiday, No Surprise, and TLC. I didn't really love Mystery, but you know, all together, this made for a pretty cool little short film, a cool little EP. This experience was great. But when you added Alien Love Call, Fly Again, Blackout, Underwater Boy, and Wild World to the mix, you got a hundred zero stars, okay? This is the worst thing ever. Zero, 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 absolute death. The day that they released this was the day that they betrayed me, was the day that they died. Stabbed in the back, shot in the heart, horrific death, an absolute bloodbath, a merciless massacre, okay? There was no recovery for it. Turnstile was dead and gone forever. They were never gonna do anything cool ever again. They're done. Stick a fork in them, roll them over, watch the steam go up, they're turning into ashes, okay? And then that riff machine, that guy that could write the simplest meat and potatoes, bouncy ass little riff that made people just go crazy. The whole glue of Turnstile, okay? This Brady guy, oh, he was such a wonderful man. Here he is over here being Brady, okay, wearing cute little hats, smoking his little weed, <laughs> playing his Jackson guitars, you know? This guy was such a great guy uh, to have on the guitar. I don't know about him personally, okay, but his riffs and tone and the way that he made turnstile just sound and even the way that he made them present live very very chill very very cool they're missing a whole lot without this guy because he ended up leaving the band i don't know for what reason it could be for very personal reasons i don't know if it's for like punk rock jesse michaels type reasons but it might be but now that we got all of this out maybe that was enough for some closure. Maybe that was enough for some acceptance. Maybe there won't be any more projections of my feelings about this band onto other bands, okay? And even onto them. Because even though they are dead, zombies have the right to roam the earth. Roaming they are indeed, because Blink-182 was like, hey, we're coming back and we want Turnstile to open for us. So we got the biggest band of all time over here, Blink-182, taking Turnstile out on the road with them. And that all led us to the nomination dose that they got from the Grammy. And this is how they rocked up to the event. Now, I don't I know they say that a picture is worth a thousand words, but I have, I have zero words for this, okay? All they have is a thousand thousand chuckles. I don't have the words. If you have the words, please say them. But don't be offensive, okay? These guys are all right to be out there expressing themselves however they want, okay? Sure, they have money, they can dress however they want. But for a lot of reasons, I find this super silly. Okay, let me try, let me try to explain why I find this so silly. Uh, they, they seem like four guys from four different bands all together. Okay, starting over here with Daniel Fang, okay, the drummer. He seems like he's in this like pop act or whatever, which is fine, which is cool, no big deal. But then over here, we got Pat with the mustache, looking like he's coming straight out of the 70s with his big collar. Brendan Yates, I don't know how many more pockets you need on, on that shirt. And then you got Freaky Franz looking like the hype beastiest beast that ever hyped, that ever beasted, okay? Look at this bag that he's got. What's with the bag? And he's got like the long sleeve underneath the t-shirt looking very, very 2004. I kind of love it, I kind of dig it, but all together it's just like the silliest thing in the world. Okay, that was about a thousand words, right? I think that was a thousand words I got out about this picture. But, you know, like I said, zombies have the right to roam this earth. So even though I think that Turnstile is dead, buried, burned, and gone, an absolute betrayal, but I wish nothing but the best for them. You know, they might be dead in my eyes. They have many more fans. Who am I? Like, they, they shouldn't care about some idiot on the internet just yammering on, you know? This means nothing, okay? They have the right to create. They have the right to express themselves however they want. But also, I have the right to have a YouTube channel and have a couple laughs along the way. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe before you bounce on out of here. Ring the bell if you're cool as hell, and until my next upload, you can watch another upload.